Okay, this is the OC Food Diva, and yes, we're at the Martin Lawrence Galleries over here at the South Coast Plaza in Costa Mesa for the uh, art opening of Robert Daber. And we're going to meet him a little later, and he's also going to talk about his pieces that are on display here. And another cool thing about Martin Lawrence is that they have pieces from artists that are infamous, like Andy Warhol, Salvador Dali. Um, they have just pieces from uh, people's collections that kind of rotate around between either the Martin Lawrence galleries or other galleries in the world. So this is a good opportunity to see cool um, pieces of art that you may not see in a museum. So, but we're going to go in and see the gallery. We're going to check out the uh, catering that they have for the reception tonight. And then I hope you enjoy. And then also, if you don't know, I know that you know me as the OC Food Diva, but I am a trained graphic artist. So in high school, actually since grade school, high school, and then college, I actually studied art. So this is actually a cool thing for me to be involved with. So we'll see you in a little bit. Hi, my name is Robert Daber. I am an artist from Connecticut and I have been painting, uh, I'm 61 years old and I've been painting for, I'm going to say, 50 years. <laughs> no, actually I've been painting for about 47 years and I started uh, as a grammar school uh, child working with pencils and charcoal and, you know, various forms of uh, art media and then it, it evolved. By the time I became uh, you know, to the age where I wanted to go to college, my father, uh, I went to my father and asked him if I could go to art school, and he said absolutely not, that you cannot make a living uh, selling art. It's very hard to do, and some statistic, something like 0.3% of people make a living selling art. So I decided to go for business, which is what he told me to do. I think that he was going to pay for it, so he was going to decide. And um, wound up in the airline business for 25 years, and the events of 9-11 uh, brought my airline career to a screeching halt because the middle management of the airline business got wiped out. So all along, for you know all those years, I was painting as a hobby, and that you know I would paint on the weekends. All my friends would go skiing, and I would be in my apartment in Boston painting and I was my original uh, a lot of my friends who went to art school told me that in order for your art to be authentic to be genuine it had to be a very cathartic process you had to disgorge all of these um, genuine feelings of angst and maybe a little bit of rage but I had grown up in the Catholic education system and um, with nuns and priests and all that. And so I was painting for a long time these, you know, it was it was mixed Catholic iconography, like giant gold chalices with thorns coming out of them and chalices with nails going in them, a little bit of blood here and there. And um, I, so I, it was fun. Certain people liked it who had the same shared experience of being in the Catholic education system. But then I found out that they weren't very warm and fuzzy and easy to warm up to in order to sell them. I mean, people did buy them, but they were people that knew you know, what I was doing and got it. So I had to come up with something that, was, uh, that people liked. And I, at, in the final years of my airline career, there was a phrase going around, and it was, um, we need to start thinking outside of the box. And that phrase drove me insane after hearing it you know, thousands of times. Everybody in the business world was using it. And so I uh, did a um, sketch. I was in a meeting at my, at my company, at my airline, of a man standing in a box with a light bulb on above his head. And I, you know, I thought to myself, I wonder if anybody's ever thought to visually interpret like euphemisms, idioms, different phrases, and things like that. And I looked around. I did a pretty. I spent a good while looking because uh, there's no way I was going to be happy just doing like landscapes and still life paintings. 
I mean, it, people do it, and it's beautiful, but it's been done thousands and thousands of times. I did have something that was my own thing. And so I just decided that I was going to visually interpret phrases, you know, any kind of phrases, idioms, euphemisms, you know, cliches, movie titles sometimes. And so I, I just started doing it, and, you know, it's, it just it evolved very quickly. Once my airline career was over, I made a few attempts to get back to the airline business, and each time something happened, and so it was almost like fate was directing me to, you know, go in that direction to pain. And so, at, you know, at that time, I, this gallery found me, and also what kicked my art into high gear was when Tom Petty had been co secretly collecting my work and, and had me do an album cover for it, one of his solo albums. So then it took off from there and has been kind of growing ever since. And here I am now, you know, with, what is it, 10, uh, no, more, 14 years later, and, you know, it's, it's funny because um, people were just asking me about, you know, the uh, essence of it or what, about the appeal of it. And in art, there's, there are artists that um, can, uh, that will, t it's, it's kind of a significant thing if you can get a, an emotional reaction from someone with art. And there, there are artists who go for shock, you know, like um, there's an artist called Andre Serrano and another one, Robert Maplethorpe, and they went for shock value, and you know, to get a reaction out of people, and, and something like that, and so I just thought, you know, I, I think it's kind of fun to entertain people, make them laugh, and I just decided to, you know, try to see if, if I could make these paintings that would entertain people, or, you know, just in some way, you know, make them, you know, it's, it's like kind of the other end of the shock, negative kind of thing, and so, you know, I just keep doing these phrases. Like, I keep thinking it's going to come to an end at some point. And it has, it's taken on a life of its own. It just keeps going and going. And I don't see any end in sight. I, I have other things I, I want to go on to, but, you know, it's pretty much, you know, it's still going. So I'm just going to keep, I'm going to ride the horse until it drops. So that's where I am right now. Uh, there are three paintings in particular when I just, I looked around and, three stood out to me. Uh, one is called Drug Wars, and it it's actually, uh, there are three paintings that I've done, and it's, I wouldn't call it a series, but it's, uh, the, the, there are three paintings that have a similar theme, and this, this one called Drug Wars, which is uh, these giant pills that have cannon emplacements on them and giant wheels, and they're firing down on all these smaller pills that are running away. <laughs> Um, but there are two paintings that precede that, that were the inspiration for Drug Wars. The first one uh, that was uh, preceding that was a, was a painting that's on the cover of my book, my second book, and it's called, um, <laughs> it's called, I'm sorry, it's called War of the Roses. And it's these roses with the same thing with the cannon emplacements, and they're firing down on, you know, people and things and buildings and things are exploding and there's smoke and fire everywhere. And then the second one that that inspired Drug Wars is um, a painting called Heart Attack. And it's it's these giant hearts. In, in these paintings, it's the same. It, they kind of evolved from that, that movie War of the Worlds where those machines are coming over the hill. And so um, this one heart attack with these giant hearts with these big wheels and again with the cannons firing and you know um, it, and that was inspired when I was in Vegas and you know I was seeing like playing cards everywhere and so the, the hearts are firing on um, di diamonds, gloves, and spades but this one Drug Wars this one when I had it in my studio it got a lot of reaction from people because it's like every day on TV you hear about the drug war and the opioid thing and all that and so it's, it actually is a very personal thing to me because I'm, I'm, I live with chronic pain, you know, since the age of 17. I've had terrible back trouble, you know, uh, scoliosis. And so, you know, that one to me was, I, I mean, I, to me it's funny because, you know, it's, it kind of relates to my situation that I'm going through right now. And um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a similar type of a situation with the giant, you know, pills and, 
it's it's just bedlam, and I, I like it because there's a lot of action, and, I, and in a lot of my paintings, there's not a lot of you know action and things happening all at once. It's a lot of times I paint just very simple one character type things. So, Drug Wars is one that uh, sometimes I consider keeping certain things that I will fall in love with, and that was one of them that I really really liked a lot. Another painting that's out there that I love and. I, I would say out of all the, I paint a lot of animals, I would say it's probably 80% of what I do are different animal situations because a lot of the phrases that I come up with lend themselves to animals and one animal in particular that I have an, a, a fondness for are rabbits and there's one rabbit that I really like and it's called a Dutch, a Dutch rabbit I guess, I think it's got a more elaborate name but they're, and they're, black, again, black and white because I have this thing for contrast. You know, I, I love anything that's black and white, any animals. I did a lot of zebras for a while because you're almost forced to look when you see something that's black and white because of the contrast, you're drawn to it. And so I, you know, I've got spotted rabbits and these Dutch rabbits, and I usually, you know, so I have a series which, you know, we uses that involves rabbits, like Bad Hair Day, um, splitting hairs, uh, I mean, I could go on for a long time, and rabbits, you know, and the word, word hair, which I, you know, use to its advantage. Um, so, the, yeah, the, the, there's one out there that's, there's actually three paintings out there with rabbits in them, and, um, yeah, so there's one that's actually, um, you know, it's so funny, because I'm trying, trying to remember all these titles, because I've got ADHD, and I, I'm always working on, like, someone asked me how long does it take to do a painting, and I have absolutely no idea, because I've never done a painting from start to finish. Like, right now, I'm working on 20 at the same time. So, um, it's sometimes hard to get them all straight, but, yeah, so rabbits. And then the, the third painting out there that um, I have an affinity for is it's called, um, it's from that famous painting with the monkeys, you know, the, you know, hear, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. And I've, I've done it probably, I'm going to say 13 times with probably 13 different animals. Then the one that's out there is crows, which I love. Like, I, I was just researching how I could buy, if, if I could buy a crow, like a baby crow. Because, you know, people have parrots, people have, like, different types of birds. I want a crow. But you can't buy American crows. It's not, it's against the law for some reason. So I researched it. I think you can get magpies and other types of crows from like Australia. So I might, I might have to get a crow. But, um, but, but the painting out there is, um, it, it's see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil with crows. And so, you know, he's got the, um, the bandana across the eyes. And then they, a lot of times they'll have either like earbuds in or earmuffs so they can hear. And then, you know, with certain animals, like with the beak on the crow, a tight string around it with a little bow. So, you know, it's it's just like, a lot of these things, it's like a theme, like artists will, there are certain artists will just do the same thing over and over, like Monet painted that bridge, God knows how many times, you know. And like um, Rene Magritte paints that bowler hat. So, you know, you, you get, you kind of take off with something and it becomes your own thing that you just can't escape. Or you, you just keep doing it until you get it the way you, you like it. And so I just am running through all these animals doing that, see no evil, hear no evil, and this one happens to be crows. So <laughs> so those are the three that for now that I can think of that stood out when I walked out there very quickly for you know, a few minutes. I've never done a painting from start to finish. And a lot of people, people ask me some very, very unusual questions. Like, it, it, And I can't figure out why it's important, but people always want to know, how long does it take for you to do a painting? And I'm like, well, some of them I can do in a day. And some, that I've got paintings I've been working on for three years. Yeah. You know, because I, if they don't present, they're, to me, they're all stories. And if the conclusion doesn't present itself, it, I could, I'll just hold on to it until the, the ending, you know, the conclusion comes in, comes into my ad. So, right. yeah, I mean, so it's a, it's a very random, arbitrary thing. And, you know, so it's impossible to answer. But my favorite question that people ask is, um, um, what comes first, the image or the phrase? <laughs> of course the phrase comes first. 
you know, I, could, I mean, if I could paint just some random thing and then hope that there's a phrase out there that'll attach to it, but that's probably not going to happen. Oh it's been, you know, I've been doing, I've been with this gallery for 12 years, and it's been the most entertaining thing. I'm so do you, you, do you go to different locations? Yeah, I go to all the locations. They um, have nine, I think nine locations. You know, San Francisco, New York, all, a lot of the majors, Dallas, here, you know. And, and so it's like a, I'll, it'll be, it's like a tour, you know, I'll go, like last night I was in La Jolla, today I'm here in Costa Mesa, and then, you know, in a couple of months I'm in New Orleans, next month. Yeah, it's been pretty wild, it's been pretty fun. And Mark Lawrence, you know, I mean, if you're with the gallery for 12 years, I mean, it's, it's, something's going right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's great, and they're, they're really wonderful, and, you know, it's, it's a great gallery, I'm very fortunate to be with Mark Lawrence. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this look at Robert Daber's um, pieces over here at the Martin Lawrence Gallery in South Coast Plaza in Costa Mesa. Hope you can make it over um, within uh, the next month to view his pieces and some other pieces that are here available for viewing and purchasing. So, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Mahalo!